You ever go in the bathroom, forget to bring something to read, so you just read anything, like Clorox? Let me see what's in this. <laughs> I'm gonna read something, I'm gonna read something. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's like, I could drink all night. Tell me about it, man. You know all my kids on drugs? They on drugs. <laughs> man, I, I need a new liver. You need a new liver? And my wife, yeah, she just left me for my best friend's wife. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> What's poppin' Jacksonville? This is your girl Carla. Tune in to Power 904. What's poppin'? This is your girl Carla bringing it to you from Power 904. I also have a special guest that's joining us with this interview, the uh, mommy activist. I'm speaking to our boy Speedy. Let me what thank you, Speedy. <laughs> let me thank you for this opportunity. But most of all, let me get a shout out to our girl. Smokey, um, who done an awesome intro for us for Power 904. So how is everybody doing today? Great, great. blessed and whole night. <laughs> <laughs> well, Speedy, let me start by saying I know I've watched a couple of your clips and you're a very funny guy oh, to me. But um, just tell us a little bit about who Speedy is. Uh, stand-up comic, been in the game for a minute, uh, done audience warm-ups, been on tour with Jamie Foxx, been on tour with, uh, Will Downing, just been on a lot of tours, uh, now I have my own radio show that I do as well, and just really just stand in the business writing, I write on the show, uh, Beach Shazam with, uh, with Jamie, so we're coming back for our third season, exclusive for you guys, we come back and start shooting our third season in January, so I'm pretty happy about that. Cool. Let me ask you this. How, tell us how you get started with what you're doing. Was it uh, the comedian part? Was it the stand-up part? Or was it just acting? Tell us how you got started. Got started. I uh, thought I could do stand-up. Uh, went to, I used to go to different comedy clubs, like on a date, and it was like, hey, I could do that. And then I gave it a shot, and it just became very natural. I found out I had a God-given gift to make people laugh. And then just hanging out at different comedy clubs, going up, doing time, to five minutes here, ten minutes there. Next thing you know, you got an hour worth of material. So it's just a matter of just keep going up to the comedy clubs and just doing my thing. But tell me this. What do you like doing most? Uh, like being behind the scenes or do you just like just performing, being out there? Well, I'll do it like this. I think especially as black people and as comics, just in general, you've got to do it all. I think my thing was I wanted to do, I love doing stand-up, but I love writing. I love producing. I produced a, uh, Gregory Brewster movie that comes out next year with Jimmy Fox that he directed called All-Star Weekend. So I like doing that side of it. I like being in the movie. I like, I like doing it all. And I think as performers and as we should be able to do it all, because if you can master it all, no one can ever walk up to you and say, well, you're just a comedian, or you're just a writer, or you're just an actor. If you can do it all, no matter what it is, you can step in there and do each one of those uh, jobs. Wow. Well, could you say we can look forward to maybe the rollout studios being on Love and Hip Hop Hollywood? I would love it. Yeah, we, yeah, we had our little show <laughs> on there. It was on there, and it, it just true. I thought it was dope. I had so many people call me, oh, we're on Love and Hip Hop. But that was dope to be on the show and to have them in, in our studios was, was just like a, you know, almost a dream come true to, to have your show on, on a, on a major network and on a major show that everybody watches a lot. So it was, it was kind of cool to get a lot of calls when they saw our, our studio being wrapped. So I thought that was dope. Cool. Well, give us, um, some feedback. Well, maybe tell us some ways that you kind of give back to the community, whether it's your community or someone else's community. Tell us some ways that you do give back. Well, the way I give back, like, I'll get a call. Someone asks me, hey, man, we need to do the show for the kids, or I'll go up to different high schools here in Los Angeles, and uh, I'll talk to the kids about different opportunities because, again, I didn't start as a comedian. I, I did a lot of goofy stuff like everybody usually does, and but I found my way to comedy that got me out of a lot of other stupid things I was doing. So I let people know, no matter where you start, it's really where you're going and how you can get there. As long as you start with a plan, and sometimes you start early. We expect everybody, as soon as you leave high school, oh, you're going to go to college. No, everybody doesn't take that route. Sometimes you got to trip and fall in order to really stand up tall. So it's just a matter of just letting kids know that you've been there and that no matter how many times you fall, as long as you get up and you keep walking, you're going to get there. So I do a lot of uh, talking to the kids that way. 
Uh, they'll, they'll have uh, different events here where, hey, man, can you just come do the show for free? And if I know it's for a friend of mine and it's helping out a foundation or something like that, I'm there. Money to me is, is, is you know, I've, I've made a lot of money, did a lot of stuff. But, you know, I'll, I'll still go do a show for free, depending on what it is. But, yeah, to help out people always, always. I love the way you give back. Mommy, after this, do you have any questions that you would like to ask while we're on the line? Yes, go ahead. Oh, sure, I do. You know, I, I know that a lot, of pol- uh, a lot of politics come into play when comedians are doing their work. And, you know, mm-hmm. I got to go I got to go in on Kanye. You know, you had Kanye West going to the uh, White House for the second time. So, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, what's your take or how would you put a spin on that or talking about Kanye West and his, uh, you know, they claim he's a genius in the, you know, for music and his entertainment, his fashion, stuff like that. But what about your spin on him going to the White House and being a, a politician or a reformed I, I, activist? I, I think what people are not looking at, you got to always look behind what they're doing. The first time he went, remember he had dropped the album, so he's got to sell out. Boom. <laughs> this time he went, for those who don't know, he wanted the, the president to pass this thing where the music that they play, that they get the residuals for their music sooner than what they did. So now everyone in, in the record business is so happy because he did that. And a lot of people don't know that's why he went up there to do that. Yeah, he, he has these side things he does and he says things that, that make you go, no, he didn't. But he actually went there to go get a piece of legislation done that that makes it where, where the, these guys who are doing this music online get their money faster than what they were doing. So he mm-hmm. passed it and it got it done. A lot of people didn't know that, but that's what he went up there to actually do. And, and he did it. He passed it. So he's, you know, he's found a niche in the system, just like the president found a niche in the system. Sometimes just, just yelling out stuff and having the cameras on you, the next thing you know, you know that person and then people go, well, I guess that's just the way it is. Unfortunately, we live in a world where now being nice, being polite, or saying, hey, man, it's okay, you come, up, you guys can come over here, or you can come, come to this country, it's not cool anymore. You know, mm-hmm. and now it's like, okay, we don't want anybody here. No, I don't respect anybody. I'm going to talk about the handicap. I'm going to talk about whoever, and, and it shouldn't be a problem because our president did it. Yeah. So I, and I think he does things for a reason. I don't think Kanye does anything haphazardly. Uh, both times he's gone up there was for a reason. The reason his wife went up there. Remember, she got a, a, a right. something signed to help her out. Right. So right. They found a way to use the president. If you cater to his ego, you can get anything you want from him. But do you want to sell yourself out like that? But if it's, it's going to make you money and at the end of the day, you got something passed or something happened for you that's going to make everybody more money, then I guess, hey, it is meet the, meet the reason why you did it. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, it's good, good for you to say that because a lot of people wouldn't even look at it like that. You know, me being mm-hmm. an, an activist and advocate for sentencing reform and also I keep up with entertainment, you know, and things like that. Looking at him, is like, I only said that, you know, you hear a lot of other entertainment saying, oh, I'm through with him. I'm done. He's wrong or this and that, you mm-hmm. know. But they didn't have the solutions either, no. you know. But when he goes there, it's like he put his foot in that door and we got work to do. And I'm so glad you be, that you explained it because I didn't know that aspect. And I've heard, I've talked mm-hmm. to say at least 70 people, you know, that yeah. they're beefing about it. And I hope yeah. that that's something, I hope that's something that you put in your spin or, you know, in your work so that people will actually know, hey, that's what he did. Because I do know that it's got to be a money clause or what's the purpose. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. What's the I mean, purpose? You- it's like the shiny penny in, in the room. When you throw a shiny penny in the room, everybody looks. It's a train wreck. Uh, when he came out and said, well, well, black people were enslaved because they wanted to be. He knew that was going to cause us to go flip flop. Oh, yeah. What the heck? Yeah, everybody flipped. Everybody did a black flip. But what was yeah. the reason for saying it? It was to get your attention. Mm-hmm. We got an album coming yeah. out. I need yeah, that. He is, yeah. you know, he's a genius, genius on that spin. Because you mm-hmm. see also, you know, if you follow him on the Twitter or, you know, he's doing his work. And he got a whole fan base that's after him. And I'm so glad that you were able to honestly, you know, put that in. I hope that you expand that so that people will know. Now that I heard it from you, I will tell other people that part that I know. You yeah. know, and, and you know, because it's important to know politics. And when you can put it in comedy, as you know, you're a well-versed comedian. you got a lot of opportunity, doors open that we can get to you. Mm-hmm. You know, and and for you to be able to be first in things like that's important. But now I got to come with that voting thing because voting is so so important. You know, and yeah, I I don't think people understand. I, I look at it like this: 
we try, I try to tell people how important it was for us to vote the first time when, when uh, we had the president be elected. And I let people know, I said, here's the problem, and it's going to sound weird. I said, women didn't like women. That's the only reason they didn't get out of the vote. They, they, mm-hmm. they picked the most weirdest thing to say, well, I don't like the fact that Hillary wears a little one-piece outfit. No, it's not about that. Here's the one about to break through the glass ceiling and make it right for all women in power. Nobody saw past that. The only thing they saw was, well, I don't like what she did with her husband. I don't like this, that, and the other. But you picked a man who told you who he was, and you didn't believe it. So now here's the second time around that we have to really get out and vote. Whether you think voting works or not, one thing we do know, if you don't vote, it's definitely not going to work. If you go out there and say, hey, I gave it my, I put my vote in, I voted for this thing, I voted for that, and I voted for these Democrats to get in office. Unless Democrats take take these different uh, seats in, in our uh, Congress and in our other parts of branches, it's not going to work. He's going to get four more years. And if you give him th- these two last four years and possibly another four, we're never going to get this country back. The one thing that he did do, he lived up to the promise that the Republicans wanted. They wanted to have control of the House, control of all that, and control of Supreme Court. Everybody's like, well, Supreme Court don't mean anything. Yes, it does. Now they can uh, repeal all the different laws that were put in place by the Supreme Court, which is abortion, which is the right to vote, which is all these other things that people just just took for granted. No, they're not going to do that. This guy said, well, I'm not going to change that. Yes, he is. He's going to vote for it. He's going to vote to change everything that's in place unless we get out and vote. People, you got to get out and vote. Tell your kids 18 and over, go vote. Know what you're voting about. Uh, they have this thing where I guess they're, they, the Republicans, they, they fight so dirty. They're sending out things saying, oh, no, vote on November 8th, not November 6th. So you have to read. <laughs> read everything yeah. and ask people. Just don't take for granted. Right. Oh, yeah, we vote on the 6th. Oh, just ask mm-hmm. about it. When do right. we vote? On the 6th? Everybody said that. That's when we vote. And that's wrong. I'm just saying, you know, they do everything they can to, you know, transfer the good to the bad. Everything hate hate is hate is beautiful now, you know. And every day, you know, they say they try to uh, say that he's not smart, but he it's not the the book smart. It's the thug life he's led because you got different levels of that life, you know. Mm -hmm. And he's good good at it. You know, good and you know how it was thing. back in the day. If you keep saying something, eventually people believe it, whether it's a lie or not. <laughs> the more you say it, hey, don't trust the newspaper. Don't trust the newspaper. Don't trust the newspaper. What happens? You don't trust the newspaper. And, yeah. and that was the first thing he needed to do. He needed people to be just don't trust the newspaper because he knew he was wrong. He knew that his life wasn't perfect. And if you let right. the newspaper dictate it, he would have been out of office a long time ago. But he let told people, hey, you can't trust them. Don't trust them. Right. It's the evil news. It's the evil news. No, it's not. It's facts. Right. When, do we stop, right. when do we stop trusting facts? When does facts become, eh, it's an option. I don't know if I want to believe that. The sky is blue. Eh, how do I know that for sure? I can right. come back outside right. and be purple for all I know. So yeah. those things, and, and just really, really, I think as, as people, the one thing we, we've lost is our, right. our care for other men and for, for other people. Right. We used to have right. that. I know they were talking about these the people, the refugees coming over here. Even if they were coming here and they were coming from somewhere else, we were a country at one time that would accept people from other places, no matter who it was, because that's what this country was built on. You come here, you find right. a better way of living, and you go and say, hey, I used to live somewhere where my kids were being raped, I was, my money was being taken, right. I was being beat up, and I came to America and I found a new way of living. Right. We have a right. president that says, no. Nah, we're not doing that no more. We and they he tells you a bunch of lies and people go, mm-hmm. Yeah, it could be there could be some people in there that want to do me harm. No, they don't. They came here and don't get me wrong, everybody's not perfect. But not but right. most of those people are coming to get away from a bad situation. And you come to the United States. We're the only country that let people come here when they're in a bad situation. Mhm. But now yeah, we're not. So can you imagine that? It's t- it's terrible. Well, you know, yeah. now I gotta move on because you know I love basketball. Don't and, you know, I mean, in my house, they are basketball fans. But, see, I'm different. <laughs> I like every basketball team. You know, okay. and, and they'll say, what's your favorite? I say, who's playing? Both of them. <laughs> and they look at me like, well, I'm not calling you because I'm excited. I'm in front of the TV. You know, I'm excited. I'm in front of the TV. They be telling me, move back. You sit too close to the TV. I shoot, I'm at this basketball game. 
You know, but man, LeBron, you know, LeBron took a switch and he gone to the Lakers, man. I said, wow, you know, yeah. how's yeah. that going to work? You know, they got a new king or what? But, you know, they lost to the Spurs. So what's your spin on that one? Well, I'm a LeBron fan. I followed him from day one out of high school to everything he's going through. <laughs> I've never been a Laker fan, so him coming here, was a, it was weird. So I'm <laughs> cheering for the Lakers, but I'm like, ah. But I think him coming here is a great thing. I think what he's going to do for the city and for the surrounding areas, just like he did in Cleveland, he's going to do the same thing here, and he did it in Miami. So I think that part of it is going to be great. As far as the basketball team, I think they're missing a couple pieces. They need a couple shooting guards, mm-hmm. and they got to really find out. you got to find out what your identity is. I think the team they have is make it to the playoffs. Don't let these last three games tell you how it's going to be. Right. He's just three. Three is it's eighty-two games. This is three out of eighty-two. He's got some seventy-nine more games to go. So I, I, you can't call it until right around December. Now December, they, if they, if their record is like twenty-four and seventeen or seventeen and twenty-four, then you may have a little problem. But I believe LeBron's <laughs> gonna figure it out. He's gonna help them young kids figure it out. And I'm kind of happy he's here because I know him very well. So I'm kind of happy he's here. They just now I got to be a Laker fan, so I got to give me a Laker shirt. <laughs> <laughs> get, your Laker, get your Laker stuff out and get in front of that game. That's right. Uh, that's right. That's <laughs> right. I think it'll be wonderful. I, I do appreciate uh, LeBron because also when he speaks up and speaks out about things, you know, he's oh giving his thought, and he has yes. such a passion for the thing yes. that we need yes. that. So him to, you know, be able to have conversation with others, it's not just like something he's reading the script, you know, he has passion yeah. for it. So I think he'll he'll be what the Lakers need because he works hard and he was a people person as well. So I yes. think, you know, he'll get the team to be, you know, appreciate him and he appreciate them so we can enjoy those Lakers. Now, on your, na- on your next, uh, I guess, tour or something like that, would you mm-hmm. concentrate on a certain, I know you target your markets the cities that you go to and stuff like that, but what would you change or put in new in your work? In my stand up or just Yeah, in your in your in your stand up in yeah, in your stand up. See if you want to do something. Well my stand up is pretty much it's just like I want people to come and enjoy themselves and make them laugh. Uh mm-hmm. making them think is what I do with my radio show and I give my point of view on that. My stand up is just for you to laugh and have a good time. So if I was to change anything, it would be probably to be more hands on, uh, as far as the different cities that we go to. Uh, mm-hmm. I know me and Jamie are supposed to go back out on tour and it'll probably be after he's got to do, um, he's going to be filming, uh, the Mike Tyson story and Spawn. So after that, we'll probably hit the road, which will probably be summertime next year. But mm-hmm. I'll, if he doesn't go out, I'll probably just go out and just do clubs. I like to be closer to the audience. So I do mm-hmm. more club setting and just, go work a club for a weekend and then go to another another city and work that comedy club for a weekend. So that would be my actual goal is to get closer to the fans and be more interactive with them. That sounds real good and sounds yeah. like you have some projects that you have coming up. Um, yeah. Well, would you say that Power 904 look forward to working with you in these upcoming projects in 2000? That would be yeah. great. We, we, let's do it, man. Let's go out and get this road and do something. Uh, let me ask you, where can your these listeners follow you on social media? Like, where can they look you up? Anything good. So go Speedy IZ Funny on any platform. Speedy IZ Funny, I'll pop up. Twitter, uh, uh, Instagram, all that good stuff. I'm on there. Speedy IZ Funny. Speedy is funny, the way I pronounce it. And, and, and you'll pull me up, uh, my show will come up, whatever else I got, we got going on, comedy tours. I got a couple of celebrity basketball games. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be in Oakland on the 24th to open up for the OJs at the, uh, at the Paramount Theater in Oakland, California. So I'll be there November 24th and that's going to be dope. Uh, the open for the OJs. I, I'll open for them four times and to go back into it again it's going to be fantastic cool I always kind of end my shows uh, my topics or my interviews that I have going on with Power 904 with a what popping question okay, my so. thing is can you give the listening ears a couple of your most funniest jokes right now huh <laughs> 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 Can I do an explicit one? No. Um, let's see. <laughs> nice, easy one would probably be um, 
Wow. <laughs> I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> okay. Uh, I do this joke about, um, the, uh, you, you know, they say, hey, if you gay, who cares? I think it's just more women for the rest of the fellas out there. But ladies, there's a certain thing you can ask your man to find out if he's gay. And then most people go, well, what is that? Ladies, the next thing with your man is go, just go, hey, baby, are your nails dirty? If he turn them in, it's cool. <laughs> oh, but he's saying them bad boys out. Y'all may have to go do some targeting with it. I'm just saying, I'm trying to help you out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got something. Man, that's real. Yeah, any dude standing his hands out, I'm just saying. You know, however you want to deal with that. So I'm here to help y'all now, so I'm here to help y'all. We sure enjoy this time. Um, you know, we oh, just you. And once again, this is Power Down 04. We would like to thank our special guest, Mommy Activist. Also giving a shout out to our girl Smokey and of course Speedy. So stay tuned to more of what's popping with your girl with power 904.